All right. Okay, welcome everybody to today's Autodesk Community Conversation. This is Vehicle Tracking Roundabouts Design with Tony Kirk. I, I never get it right, Tony. I'm just going to call you Tony. Karkamo. <laughs> Karkamo. I'm sorry about that. I, I should be one to talk with a weird name, but uh, um, you don't have a weird name. It's just I, I got to stumble over it. I'm your host, Sean Hurley, Autodesk Community Team. And uh, all right, next slide, please. That's cool. No, nope. yeah, there we go. Community conversations are, are virtual meetups featuring expert speakers from across the community. Sessions range from deep dives, tips and tricks, and live demonstrations on products such as AutoCAD, Revit, Dynamo, Fusion 360, roundtables, and industry, all levels, beginner to expert, depending on the sessions. So um, it, it's, it's for everybody. And you can host your own if you have expertise in something. You're welcome at the end uh, to submit your own proposals. Next, please. This is a fun one from the lawyers. This is the one that says, make any decisions based on only the shipping product. So if I say something or Tony mentions something that doesn't exist in the product today, but we're saying it, it may be in the future, don't make any purchasing decisions except for based on the products as they're shipping today. So no robotic round, roundabout mechanism, AI thing going yet. So next, please. Just the simple uh, uh, norms of the uh, online event here. Everybody's line is muted to reduce the uh, background noise. We do invite you to turn on your camera if you feel comfortable with that to kind of give us a in-person kind of feel. Um, uh, you know, it's kind of a weird thing, we're digital, but we do have sessions at AU um, where we're gonna be in person as well as streaming. So it's gonna be nice, we're gonna be back together. So if you're coming to AU, say hi to me and Tony, definitely. Um, this is a conversation and it should be exactly that. So if you have a question relevant to what Tony's talking about, you know, post it in the chat or use your Zoom uh, raise hand function, which is in the bottom right. And uh, when there's a moment, I will uh, raise that with Tony. We'll see if we can't get you an answer or maybe after the session. Um, this session is going to be recorded, or it is being recorded, and I will post to the event page where you registered. And, uh, you know, you are being recorded. So if you don't agree to it, get off. <laughs> uh, all right, let's go to the next slide. I'm Sean Hurley. I'm Autodesk Community Engagement Manager. I'm a geeky technologist in Bend, Oregon. And hey. full of roundabouts here. <laughs> And uh, my name is Tony Karkamo, president of Civil CAD Learning Solutions and also president of the DFW BIM uh, Infrastructure User Group, online user group. Uh, I'm also uh, part of the Autodesk Expert Elite uh, uh, team or group and part of other Autodesk uh, committees and groups at Autodesk. So uh, you may see me on, on, on my user group, on MeWe platform. You can also see, uh, follow me on uh, LinkedIn. Thanks for joining us today, Tony. Yeah. All right, so uh, I'll get started. Um, so this session, we're going to do a, a kind of a light intro to vehicle tracking. If you've never used it, uh, it's a great way to design, uh, do preliminary design or even final design for your roundabouts. Now, this session will be for site designers. We're not going to be building corridors. We're going to build our, uh, our basically layout, 2D layout of a roundabout. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the first session, we'll talk about some of the design standards you're going to be looking at when you design a roundabout. Uh, second part of the, the video, we'll actually talk about laying out a like a T-intersection roundabout. And in the third section, we'll get uh, we'll take a kind of a deep dive into the settings and styles of a roundabout. Now, if you have any questions, go ahead and post it on the chat. I'll try my best to answer. If I'm not, um, I'll try to your, take your name down, give you my email, and I'll try to get those answers to you. Um, all right, so we'll get started. And this is going to be, if you don't know, AutoCAD can be installed in a basic AutoCAD platform or MicroStation. So uh, I'm going to be using the basic vehicle tracking roundabout tools. There are roundabout tools in Civil 3D, but I'm going to be using strictly the uh, vehicle tracking tools for roundabout design. All right. Like I said, this is kind of a light intro to roundabout. You know, we can probably spend day, a day or two just talking about roundabouts and all the tools within vehicle tracking. 
if you don't know, vehicle tracking has actual three modules. One is the sweat path for vehicle turning analysis. Um, the second is the parking layout tool. So if you're doing commercial or even like multifamily, it's a great tool to lay out your parking um, and drive aisles for your, for your site. Uh, and then the third module is your roundabout tools. So um, I don't know how many of y'all have taken advantage of it. Um, if you want to put some chat, if you're actually using vehicle tracking, uh, I know for years, you know, we used, uh, I used a competitor, which was the Transoft Solutions Auto Turn that some of me are probably familiar with, but this is the Autodesk version. So, uh, um, by the way, I'm kind of curious, how many of you are actually have used vehicle tracking within this, this year alone? in any of your projects, uh, either through the civil 3D or just strictly from vehicle tracking tools. Anybody has actually designed something? Okay, cool. Robert, all right, that's good. Sid, all right, yeah, good, good, good. All right, if you don't know, it's a really great automated tool, geometry tool, so it does create you know, your corridors uh, if you're using the civil 3D version. All right, let's go to, my, I'll go to my next slide. Okay, so I'm sure y'all have seen many different designs of roundabouts. I mean, there's probably, I've probably seen 15 to 20 different versions of roundabout. Uh, if you typically see in a smaller um, uh, rural area, you might see a single lane uh, roundabout, which is just one lane wrapped around uh, of a landscape island in the middle. Uh, I typically prefer to call them traffic circles <laughs> when it's just one lane, uh, but then you get more complex ones with double, triple lanes, slip lanes, uh, as you can see in the image here, you got different examples. If I go to the next one, you can see even more complex uh, roundabouts and stuff. And these are probably stuff you probably see in the UK. I don't think I've seen this in the United States, um, but UK, you know, you know, does some pretty pretty amazing designs for you know for their roundabouts, um, highways, even in the city. As you can see there in the one on the right, that's probably the most complex one I've ever seen right there on the right. <laughs> it's got little roundabouts within a big roundabout. Uh, and then you got double roundabouts are interlocking uh, together. Um, so, uh, but yeah, there's so many different ones. Um, I've seen some for highways, um, subdivision areas, you know, just so many different ways you can get, um, uh, you can uh, design these roundabouts. Well, that's uh, a demolition derby in this town. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, how many uh, know, uh, how many of you online uh, actually seen a roundabout in your community? You know, if you want to put in chat, say yes. Uh, if you actually have a roundabout uh, in your city or community. Now, I know I'm in Dallas, so I've seen several different versions of it uh, in the North Dallas area and Fort Worth area. Um, we have some tra uh, traffic circles and roundabouts. Okay, we got a few people that have done some roundabouts, okay, uh, in their community. And it started to get more and more popular if you haven't noticed here. So I'll give some simple facts here in a few minutes about roundabouts. Okay, so when you're designing roundabouts, there's actually you know two main manuals. There's a third one I listed here, but when you're designing manuals, one of the most important ones is the MU2CD, um, which is the Manual Unified Traffic Control Device. That one dictates the signage and pavement marking for your roundabout or even um, school zones, um, highways, so if you're ever done any kind of transportation project, this is one of the manuals you'll probably be referring to. Um, and this manual is actually linked to the vehicle tracking roundabout tool. So it actually puts in the striping and also it puts in the signage based on these design standards. The other one is the, um, uh, the Federal Highway uh, Administration handout um, uh, standards. You know, so uh, if you're doing a roundabout, you're also gonna be looking at this one too. Uh, they, have, they have an actual whole dedicated chapter and section for roundabouts. And a third one, uh, if you're not familiar, there's another one, uh, the National uh, uh, Corporate Highway Research Program. They actually have another manual here dedicated to roundabouts. It's just something I saw online that you know, um, some people use too also. Now, certain cities actually, um, here in Dallas, we have multiple big, large cities, and some of these cities actually have their own design criteria uh, for roundabouts that very mimics the MUTCC and also the federal highway standards and stuff. So they may include additional standards and ordinance for road, uh, uh, for roundabout designs in, the, in that local city, so an ordinance. So usually the first time when, when you're doing a roundabout, you actually wanna go look at your code for that city and see if they actually have their own design standards. 
Uh, how many have actually gone and actually uh, read through some of these manuals, especially the MUTCD standards um, and the roundabouts for federal highway standards? I know I actually have a, a digital copy uh, here on my computer desk because I actually look at it every now and then when I'm doing like traffic inter intersections. So, uh, yep, yep, good, yeah. All right, so let's talk about uh, the MUTC real quick. You know, so in the, in the MUTTC standards, um, you'll see regulations for barricades, gates, warning symbols, uh, conventional road signs, toll road signs, general information signs, every sign you can think of, uh, they have a standard for it in their manual. As you can see, this is just, this is not the complete list. There's actually more chapters dedicated for signage. And in the next section, they actually have payment markings for roundabout markings. Um, uh, toll plazas, uh, uh, colored pavement, pedestrian, and traffic control for school zones. So I actually you uh, gone into the traffic control when I'm doing school projects. That's a great chapter. You, you really got to look into that because it tells you where to put the signage, where to put the pavement marking for pedestrian crossings, for school, school crossings. So that's something you really want to, you have to go look at when you're doing school projects and stuff. Um, but uh, you can actually, the, the manual is actually free. Uh, if you go, just go to Google search, type in MUCD, you can actually download a, a free version of this handout uh, or manual. So questions so far about the manuals. Um, I think all the manuals other than the, uh, there's actually one, the geometric highway standard manual. I think that one you actually have to pay for when you're doing transportation. Uh, I didn't list that on there, but that's another manual you can, uh, you'll be referencing when you're doing highway projects. Uh, I like to refer it as the big green book. Some of you may have heard of that term, the big green book for highway design. Um, all right, let's go to the next one. So here's some fun facts real quick before we get going into it. So uh, as of 2020, there was roughly 7,900 roundabouts in the United States. That's a lot. That's more than I thought. You know, I thought it was around like 1,500, but yeah, there's a lot. But if you look at the UK, which is, you know, well, in, well known for the roundabouts, they have 25,000, you know, uh, roundabouts in, in the UK. And it's amazing to, to hear that there's 25 where the country's actually, what, maybe a third of the size of the United States, maybe a fourth. <laughs> uh, and they have that many roundabouts. Um, roundabouts have been shown to reduce uh, accidents by 75%. So uh, the more people that get familiar and uh, understanding how to you know, drive through a roundabout, not coming to a complete stop, you know, um, the better. Uh, roundabouts have reduced vehicle emissions and fuel consumptions by 30%. So, you know, you know, every time you're stopping and going, it's eating up gas and, and producing more emissions. So roundabouts do, uh, is better for the environment. Uh, roundabouts have, uh, have a much lower maintenance cost in a typical, like a four-way traffic signalization intersection. So all that conduit underneath the ground, the lighting, uh, traffic lights, you know, that costs a lot of money to do maintenance versus a roundabout, you know. Uh, and then last one, study shows that roundabouts reduce traffic delays by 60 to 70 percent, which is pretty amazing if you think about it. Uh, so if everyone understands how to actually drive through a roundabout, you know, uh, traffic will continue flowing. Um, all right, questions so far about some of these fun facts. So um, I was really surprised about the traffic delays. I was like, wow, I thought it was going to be like 25, 30%, but you know, 60, 75% based on studies. Uh, it's pretty amazing. Okay, so let's talk about some of the uh, standards in the vehicle tracking. So when you get into vehicle tracking and you open up the settings, you'll notice that there's 16 different types of roundabout standards. Uh, you got Danish, you got British, uh, Australian. Spanish, Romanian, a lot of different standards. And when, within those standards are actually the actual roundabout different configuration styles. So we're gonna be using the US Conjunction uh, Design Standards of 2010. And there's ni uh, nine different roundabout standards or configurations that you're gonna see in there. We're not gonna go through each one of those. We're gonna probably do like two uh, to show you the difference. Uh, but it's pretty amazing that you know, Autodesk has been able to accumulate all this information and put it together. Um, and uh, uh, and constantly update this. I think the latest 2023 version, they um, included the parking standards for France, just to know some of the updates on the 2023. Uh, they also added some new German vehicle standards in the vehicle tracking, if you didn't know, or you know, for the latest updates in 2023. Uh, and then also in 2023, because I am using uh, vehicle tracking in 2023, uh, they, uh, they improve support for network licensing. Uh, 
Uh, there was a timeout issue for network license for the tracking. They actually improved and uh, may have fixed that issue now. So, all right. All right, so this is one of my quotes. I always say Autodesk software is only as good as a user. So, um, so understanding what the software can and can't do is very important to me. And that's my personal quote. I don't know if it's ever been quoted anywhere else, but if the user doesn't understand software, then they're going to feel like the software sucks and they're going to hate it, you know? Uh, so it's important. Training is important and understanding the limitation of the software. There is no such thing as a perfect software anywhere out there. No company. There's always um, some limitation to the software. Okay, so uh, I guess we can get started. Uh, I'm going to switch over screens now and switch over to AutoCAD. So let's see. I'll stop sharing and share my other screen. And let me know if you can see my screen. Everybody good? Right. We see it. Yep. Okay. So I have a very simple drawing here. Uh, I have two alignments in here in this uh, um, site here around Dallas area location here. Um, I actually got it out the whole subdivision, just made some simple alignments. And I'm going to create a simple uh, roundabout. Now I'm going to create two different ones and two different drawings. In one drawing, I'm going to show you where I'm using corridors. Um, building a corridor for the roundabout. And the other one, I'm just going to create a simple 2D layout of a roundabout. So in here, this is going to be, I think this is going to be my 2D here in this version. So I'm actually going to go to the vehicle tracking tab, got it installed. And I'm going to go into the roundabout tab and click on add roundabouts. Now I'm going to talk about the settings at the end of this, but I'm just going to go ahead and show you how easy it is to create a simple 2D roundabout. Now, I'm gonna to browse to the US Junction design standards and expand that uh, library. And then I'm gonna expand the uh, 2010 version. Now there is a 2000 version, as you can see here. I expand it to the same settings, but I'm gonna go and pick the urban double lane roundabout. Now, when you click it and I hit proceed, it's gonna create a, a copy and I'll pull down the bottom. That way you can uh, actually edit that actual standards. So I'm going to select this urban design layout tool here and I'm going to say proceed. It says, do you want to make this as a default? I'm going to say no. I'm not going to make this default. I'm going to use a different one the next time. And then I'm going to select the intersection. But let's go through here. So here I would type the name. If I had like street A dash street B. Directly. And here it's showing you that we're using this standard to lay out this roundabout. And here's my um, uh, it, uh, inner circle diameter and outer circle diameter and also the apron width. So when it creates this circle, I think I could use my pen. Can I use my pen on here? Um, I can actually change this, but I'm gonna change this value and I'm gonna round it to 200 feet. And in the uh, circle, to 95 even, and then apron to seven. I'm gonna round that up. I don't like having um, odd dimensions for round about, uh, for my uh, circles and stuff. Now, if I was going to build my corridor, I would go ahead and show my existing surface, but on the other drawing, I'll build my corridor and target that surface. Now at the bottom, this is really important, the appearance. It's just like styles, um, pipe styles, corridor styles, surface styles. You have styles pre-built for your corridor. So there's different versions in here. We have a light, dark, and I'll go through how each one of them look, but I'm gonna select the light dark, uh, the light colors for dark, uh, a dark background. I'll click okay. And I'm gonna to point to the intersection of my two uh, alignments. As you can see, it's building my circle. This says select the um, uh, defining access point. So my approach lane. Here it is. There's my first arm or leg coming in to this uh, roundabout. I'm going to change the width. The default is 10 point something, but I'm going to do 11 on these uh, approach and exit. 11 foot wide. And let's see here. Now I can dictate and say, okay, I want three lanes or one lane, but I'm going to say two lanes for this design here. I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to click my other approach. And here I can. Um, Change this width also to 11 and 11. Okay, and then I'll pick one more up top and I'll change that to 11 and 11. 
And as you can see, there's my layout for my roundabout. And as you see, it's dynamic. You've got all these grips to modify the radiuses, the signage. You actually have signage based on the MU MUTCD standards. And you've got striping already shown in, in here. But let's talk about the styles, how this visually looks. So if you wanted to show more pavement, you want to assign colors, you want to change a line type, I'll show you how to do that. Um, but first, I'm sorry, for first, let's do some edits, some very simple edits to this roundabout. So if I go back up to the edit button here on the vehicle tracking under roundabouts, I can click on the edit and select my roundabout. And then this brings up my dialog box. And then one of the greatest things about vehicle tracking, they have this little diagram. If I turn it on, here it is. And I, I love it because it really explains what you're about to change and what you're about to edit. So if I shift this over and let's say I'm gonna add a crossing to one of the legs. So I'm gonna look at maybe this west side and I can add a crossing in here. I can turn it on and say uh, pedestrian, equestrian, or then you got different versions of your crossings and I'll turn both of them on actually. And you can see what it's actually doing within the diagram, the type of uh, inner, uh, crossing you're having across that uh, median. Now, right now, I don't actually have a curb median. I actually have just a stripe median here on this uh, leg, but I'm gonna turn it on. This offset distance controls how far it is from that traffic circle lane. So I'm gonna say 80 feet for now on both of these. And I hit apply. Oop, close and don't crash. Oh, let's try that again. Didn't come up. Let's go back to my traffic and go back to edit and go back to my crossings. Let's see, edit, edit, edit. Okay. And let's see. Oh, I think all my layers are off. Just a second. Let me turn on my layers. Some of my layers are off. And Sorry about that. Some of my layers were actually turned off in the drawing. Let me freeze some of this stuff in here. So you can see it added some crossing here. Uh, based on the style I selected. Let me go back and edit that crossing again to show you how that works. It is dynamic. It automatically inserts it in there. So I'm gonna go back into my vehicle tracking and say, edit. Come on, edit. And I'll do it on the other leg. I'm gonna switch over to my east. So this is my east street. And then crossing, I'll turn it on. I'll just hit apply to show you what it's actually doing. And let's go say entry level. I'll pick a different version here. Uh, let's see here, detector, detector. Let's see if it'd be more noticeable. Close that out. Come on. And you can see my crossing is actually right in here. Now you do have gizmos that where you can move the sign. You can actually move some of these signs out. You can actually switch um, the angle on the fly. You can actually remove crossing. So when I click on the actual crossing, I can say crossing, remove. You can see an X pop up and you can remove that crossing out of your uh, island. Okay, now, uh, you can also, back into the edits, delete and remove, uh, add additional approach lanes. So if there was another alignment coming in from, let's say, the south, I can just click on my, uh, uh, my roundabout and add a new approach or come up here and say, add approach and then select the roundabout and then select my alignment and would allow me to add another approach. Or I can delete approaches. So I can come here on the ribbon, back up top, and say remove approach road. So I'll select the roundabout 
and then select the actual alignment for that approach. And you can delete that approach as you can see here, All right? Pretty simple. Um, I think the best thing that I enjoy using about the roundabout is the diagram. You know, the diagram really helps out uh, with the uh, designing the roundabout. When you have this little diagram and you're making modifications to the exit lanes, the outer uh, edge of pavement, um, the splitter island, the crosswalk, the rumble stripes. If you don't know what a rumble stripe, the rumble stripe is basically a kind of a safety measure when you're going off, like you, you may have seen it on the edge of a pavement and you feel this little, it's kind of an indentions in the road telling you know that you're going off the pavement or you're about to merge into another lane. So as you can see in the diagram, these are rumbles in there. So that's a safety measure. Uh, so I'm sure people have seen it on the sides of a highway or a road and you can hear it uh, when you start driving over it, you start making this loud noise because it's got little grooves in it. So um, speed striping and turn arrows, you can actually uh, control how the turn arrows look. So let me zoom in and show you. Oh. Turn that back. Oh, there we go. And I'm going to zoom into some, some turn arrows. Let me zoom in real quick and show you how you control the actual pavement arrows. All right, so let's go back into a real quick edit. And if I had some signage in here, let's go to React. Sorry, signage, pavement. You can actually turn them off and on, as you can see here. These are all the signage within the roundabout, but you can actually turn those off. If you don't want any of that on, you can go and uncheck those arrow um, um, pavement markings and signs. You can see here, that's the striping. I can uncheck all those items if I didn't really wanna show them in my model. But why would I do that when I can create a style? We'll talk about that here in a minute about styles where you can control what is being displayed and what's not being displayed. Um, let's go back to the North Arrows real quick. Um, let's go back into vehicle tracking, edit, and go back into the uh, arrows. So in here, if I turn them on, I'm going to apply it. You see I turned it on. There was a checkbox. I turned them on, and then you'll see it pop up right here. I can control the, the actual location, how far it is from the actual intersection of the roundabout. And let's say I'm, I'm gonna be 100 feet. And then here I can say, okay, it's 15 foot and it's five foot wide. And if I hit apply, you can see it moved it, it changed the, dire uh, uh, the dimensions of that uh, turn arrow pavement marking. Let me zoom in now and show you more edits. So we go back in there, edit. Move this over a little bit. All right, now you do have different options here. So we got your two lanes, that's why you see two of them in here. So what if I wanna do right turn? You know, I wanna switch this over to a right turn. Both of these are right turn and I hit apply. And there you go. It's just switched those turn arrows uh, on there automatically. Uh, the next thing you wanna look at is you see this street alignment name, which is kind of annoying. It's not in line with the alignment. This is the arm name. I wanna update that so it's actually running parallel to the alignment. So there is a tool for that. If I go back into my edit, click on my alignment and under, I think it's under preference, align name to arms. I turn the checkbox and hit apply and then okay. And you'll see that that alignment for that leg, close is now in line with the alignment. Now the roundabout, you know, there's nothing really there to align with, you know, it's, it's a circle. So question so far about just making some of the free edits, you know, there is a lot of settings in here. Each, each leg has its own setting. As you can see, there's arm or arms, you can call them arms or legs, I like to call them legs, but I have two legs and each one has its own data. So I can control, let's say for that entry lane here, for the east. So this is the uh, the exit entry lanes. So I can change those width in here. So let's say uh, I want this to be 12 foot and then I want um, the taper width to go 20 feet. 
And while I'm doing this, let me turn on my diagram back up over here. You can see what I'm actually changing. When I click on it, so maybe this is gonna be a 12 foot lane for this um, entry coming in. And then let's see if I wanted a curb offset, I can set a curb offset. And I think this would be incredibly hard to do without the diagram, you know? Um, so I highly encourage y'all to turn on the diagram when you're actually changing the settings and stuff, uh, it becomes helpful. Now, if I wanna add another lane, I can. So this is my arm over here. So I can add a third lane, say number of lanes, and say three and hit apply. And you see here, now I have three lanes over here, okay? Um, and then for the exit, I can switch that over to three lanes also and hit apply. And I'll have three lanes now over here for the uh, exit and approach for this arm. Um, let's see what else. Do, do, do. Oh, the grips. Now you can make changes through this dialog box, which I highly encourage because you can be more accurate through the dialog box by typing in the curve radiuses and stuff. But there are gizmos in here, like these grips that allow you to change those values. As you can see here, I just changed this midi, uh, the middle island here, the striped middle island. Uh, I just changed that width in here uh, on the fly. Now, I don't know what that dimension is because I just kind of used the gizmos. That's why I pretty much highly encourage doing it through the actual tool editor so you can get precise dimensions of what you're changing. Um, so this was um, splitter island, uh, splitter island curtain. Um, I think this is mine the right one, yeah, east, yeah. So um, let's add a splitter island real quick. I'm gonna go to arm one. Oh, and sorry for the delay because sometimes there's a lag when you're in the, the actual edit button. You might experience a one or two second lag, especially when you're trying to close the dollar box. So I'm gonna go to splitter island. So the splitter island, I'm gonna hit splitter island and turn it on. And as soon as I hit apply, it will apply the island. So you see here, it turns on. Now I could have done that through here or I could have done it through the actual ribbon. So here's the delay here, two seconds, okay. I could have gone through the ribbon going and had a, um, uh, let's see where, I think it's, sorry. Right here, so split island. So either you do it through the edit dialog box or you do it through the uh, through through here. Um, I could probably select the roundabout, do it the other side. Uh, but I used to prefer doing it through the dialog box. It's kind of like the quarter properties. You try to do all your edits through the quarter properties, even though there's gizmos in plan view to move the corridor regions and stuff. Um, but you, you I, I think you'll find it as much easier doing edits through here. Now you see this red mark is telling me that it doesn't meet the design criteria when it lights up red, um, that what I have currently doesn't meet that Astro standards uh, for that roundabout and that actual splitter island. Um, so if I run a report, like an analysis on this roundabout, close this, and right here it says design check, I'll run a design check and it'll give me the list of items that doesn't meet design criteria. So on that first one here, it says exit lane, it says exit lane exceeds the maximum of two uh, specified in the standard. So it says that for this type of island, I have three and the max is two. Uh, the splitter island is telling me that the, um, the splitter island entry curb gutter offset is less than 0.98. So it actually tells you what you need to modify and then you can go back um, and uh, change those. So it actually uh, meets those design criteria. Now I got a bunch of them in, the, in, in here because I was just kind of playing around with the gizmos, uh, but that's a nice tool to have and to verify that you're actually designing this roundabout in 2D correctly per the federal highway design standards and also the MUTD standards. Um, let me go back here and, and I, I can go into the ribbon and remove the splitter island too. There's a pull down here, splitter island and say remove splitter island and just kind of hover over it. And you see an X show up. As soon as I click, oops, and remove, oops, refresh, try that again. Remove. Yeah. 
should have removed it. Uh, I think I accidentally exploded. Did I actually hit explode? Can't say real quick. Go back into my edits and see what's going on. I'll turn it off. Go back to Street A, Splitter Island. Oh, it is turned off. I think it's some reason it accidentally exploded and left the line work there. This should have disappeared. I don't know why that remained. Um, question so far on just adding uh, a slip lane. I'm sorry, uh, uh, a uh, splitter island, crosswalks. You know, you can add crosswalks in here. There's different versions of the crosswalks. Uh, when I select my roundabout and just kind of hover over where I want it. And you can see here, it created the, the crosswalks. And there's different versions of the crosswalk if you want the actual stripes based on the style. Um, when I click on it and go back into uh, my edit, there are multiple, I think there's five different versions of the crosswalk. So if I come in here and say, um, let's go look at the different versions. There's one, and I wanna mimic the other side here. So I'm gonna go into, uh, unsignalized pedestrian zebra and there you go i can see there that's probably the most common one people see when you're doing landscape uh doing crosswalks on an island now you can make it you can use the little gizmos here to make it uh bigger as you can see here i'm actually just changing that width but you're really kind of eyeballing it you know it's much easier to go and do it through the dialog box to make sure you're getting exact dimensions uh, the crosswalk width, you know, typical, you know, I think it's eight foot for uh, a width. And I'll make sure it's the same on both sides. Hit apply and you'll see it'll update. And then the location, you know, is it too far up to the round, uh, too close to the roundabout? Should I get further back? I can type in maybe 60 foot back in here and hit apply. And now it's actually shifted it back. Close that right there. And there we go. And let me go add that other approach real quick. Um, let's see, uh, add approach. It's like my roundabout because the roundabout is like one object. Okay, I just let everyone know. And I'm gonna select my approach and I'm gonna say 11 foot lanes and hit okay. And there we go. Now what you're seeing this line here is the fastest, um, uh, route through the roundabout um this little striping um you can actually turn it off through the style we'll talk about the style a little bit later on in a minute so hey tony yeah we've got sid with a couple of questions for you if you got a moment first one is do the alignments for the secondary roads need to be perpendicular to the main alignment no they don't the only thing you have to watch for is that the radius you know if it comes in um and you have a curve in there it may change the alignment of that secondary road comes in because there is a minimum radius. So sometimes I'll see alignment. Some people draw alignment like, let's say it's, it's a curved one coming in and tying into the second one. There is a minimum radius for that alignment. And if it doesn't meet it, it will actually change it uh, for you based on that actual uh, federal highway uh, administration standards and stuff. So uh, be Make sure you're paying attention to that radius coming in, but no, it doesn't have to be perpendicular. I can, I've seen two alignments that are both arcs tying into each other. As long as those radius of those arcs meet the actual design criteria standards. Now it's a good question. Excellent, and we've got one more. Is there a minimum deflection from the main alignment that needs to be maintained? Deflection. Um, hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. On the second oh, row of deflection. Um, so you're talking about the angle deflection coming in? Okay. Yep. Um, well, let's see here. If Since everything is dynamic, if I move this roundabout, let me see if I can make it like a weird angle. Um, you see everything is moving. Um, I, I would say there has to be a minimum standard um, honestly, I would have to look at the, uh, uh, the federal highway design standards. It wouldn't be any MUTCD, but it'd be in that federal highway standards of that minimal deflection angle. 
um, because I have seen some sharp ones where that angle was like 30 degrees. It was coming in. Um, so that alignment, you know, when you have two alignments that were like this, you know, I have seen some pretty sharp ones like that. Uh, I think not here, but I think I saw some of them in the UK. So um, that's all gonna be controlled by that um, design criteria that you're selecting when you create that roundabout. But that's that's definitely a, a good question. Um, honestly, I have to look, it, it, I think it would have to be based on the type of roundabout you're, uh, you're creating. You know, so if I came back to uh, my edit and selected preference general, it's going to be based on which one of these standards you're using. I'm sure there's got to be, each one has a different standard um, because like a mini circle is one lane. So it's got less, uh, it's less dense with, you know, we've got one little lane, the circle, inside circle and outside circle is smaller. So I'm sure you can probably get a big, uh, a smaller angle coming into like a secondary road coming in. So um, yeah, so for example, let me, let me just show you that mini one and close this. Sorry for the delay here. So if I just delete this, yes, and did the mini, and let's say that mini circle one, okay, proceed, no, and then I'll, and I'll do, mm, let's see, inscribe, I'll do 60 uh, inner out of diameter, okay, I'll do seven, inner circle diameter, I'm gonna say uh, 15 for now, I'll do 80. Of course, that's always going to change. Excuse me. All right, now I'll bring it in here and then select my approach legs. At and notice here it's defaulting to one lane because that's pretty much a traffic circle. And you see it's much, much smaller. And it looks a little different too, the striping. Here we go. Now that one, you know, if I did move the alignment, let's see if I did something like this. Is that something you were kind of asking right there? It's like, as you can see here, that's a pretty sharp angle in this little traffic circle coming in. So I just moved the alignment and it auto updated the roundabout immediately. So that kind of the question you were asking, um, who was that? Sid, yeah. Not as dressed, yeah. yeah that, that, one, one, that one scares me, that. Tony. Yeah. Where, where, where I live, if, we, if it was all just local residents that got used yeah. to this stuff, it'd be one thing, but we get an, in, a ton of tourists that fly into our town and they're not thinking about roundabouts. They don't have roundabouts in their yeah. cities and they lose their mind. And this one, oh my gosh, it was, I've, I've seen one like that. It was a sharp angle like that where it looked like a Y. It wasn't traditional roundabout. And I have seen some of them were not a perfect circle. It was actually like a egg shape <laughs> roundabout. This, now, this looks like that drinking bird, you know, a little game, a little <laughs> like thing that just bounces down and drinks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, that's a good question. Uh, five legs. On, uh, oh, you have one with five legs. Okay, that's kind of rare. I haven't seen one. Five. I've seen one that was in the UK with five legs. Wow, okay. Uh, um, I bet that one, is it a large one or a small one uh, roundabout? A large, okay, cool. Okay, um, let's see what else I need to talk about. Okay, so let's talk about the other one that does the corridor and show you what's happening, how that looks on that style. Uh, the only thing I changed about this setting, it's the same drawing, is I went into the settings tab here. So drawing settings. And under roundabouts, I selected the roundabouts and then corridors and I turned everything on. So when I turn this feature on, it's going to create all the alignments, the profiles, a corridor. So I'm just click OK. And then if I pick the exact same um, roundabout design that I was doing earlier, the urban double lane roundabout, 2010 Federal Highway Standards. And uh, no, yeah, let's see, we'll hit OK. And we'll select our existing surface. I have an existing surface in here and I'll click OK and go pick my intersection and my 
approach uh, lanes. I'll just use all the defaults for now to show you what it's going to look like. I accidentally um, add another approach here. So as you can see here, it's building the corridor for me automatically. Um, so that's the difference between the civil 3D version. It'll build this corridor, it can build the surface, and then you've got a few more tools in the, um, uh, in the vehicle tracking and the, uh, the civil 3D. But if I go into this edit tool, there's gonna be one little thing you wanna look at is how that inside uh, roundabout looks and lanes, if you want it crowned or not, you want control the slope. So if I go in there to that first, let's say the roundabout dimensions, let's see, crown lanes. So here you go. Now you can start controlling the percentage of that crown lane, the interior parts, the level of grade, what percent cross slope do you want across those um, uh, lanes inside your roundabout? So that's the tools you would wanna play with if you're building a corridor uh, for uh, this roundabout. Um, also, let me go back into, Turn this on here. Let's see. Ted said the fifth, the five leg has been designed, but he didn't know if it had been built last time you checked. Mm, okay. Um, let's see. I don't think we should be upping the the uh, game on this because <laughs> yeah. if my town hears about this, they're going to be like, "Well, then we need to do a six oh, and yeah. get double stack. How about yeah. a double stack spiral up? Is that possible?" <laughs> yeah. Um. But you know, as you can see here, when I click on the corridor, now you start using some of the uh, corridor editing tools in Civil 3D in here. So uh, versus the other one, it's 2D in here and it's more of the vehicle tracking tools and so. Um, now let's talk about styles. We got a few more minutes. I'm gonna talk about how do you make this look like a 2D drawing just with sign striping and that's it, some pavement. How do you control that? Well, it's, it's the style. So if I go click on this edit, Let's actually uh, create a new style. So I'm going to go to my settings tab up in the left hand corner in my vehicle tracking tab and go to drawing settings. And then go to uh, let's do, 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 styles. So here, this is the default. Now it's just changing the layers. You know, if I go in to look at this and say edit, you're going to see this kind of a more advanced version of layer manager. So here you go, so these are the layers, the colors, it's assigned for every one of those objects. Uh, so for example, the crosswalks, it's turned on, but I can sign a color, I can sign a layer here, I can type in a layer. The only thing I don't like that, I, I don't know if I'm missing is that it doesn't pull up the layer list. So I had to type in the layer that I want, um, but I can assign an individual layer to every one of these items. It's a lot, look how many layers there, I mean objects there are for this roundabout but you can visually control how every item looks. So what I actually did that in one of my drawings, I did a save as, uh, as a default, they're all gonna say uh, J, uh, JTN number. And if you see this plus symbol, that's actually like a wild card. So it's gonna be a sub layer. So it'll say JTN um, curbs, which is, which it's interesting how they spell it. I don't know if that means concrete curbs or not. <laughs> so uh, I'm assuming they're meaning curbs because it's K-E-R-E-B-S. Um, but uh, I can override that and say, okay, it's not gonna be JTN something, something. It's gonna be uh, C dash pavement uh, dash curbs. And it'll put it on that layer and I can sign the color and then the line type through here. So it's kind of a more advanced layer uh, version of layer manager. Uh, for specifically for the roundabout, and it is dynamic. So what I did, I went in here and did a, uh, a duplicate. And so I made this copy here of this one. And I went in and modified this and created my, I started creating my own company standard for this. So as you can see here, I started signing layers, signing colors, turning everything off and on um, that I wanted to show. So then once I did that, I can now apply that to my roundabout. So if I could just click on my edit and go to my uh, general and under uh, appearances, I can select that copy one I did and hit apply and close it. Got a second here, come on, close, don't crash, don't crash. 
And there we go. So you see it changed the colors, it changed the line ties, it put it on the layers I wanted. So it's just like Civil 3D, everything's controlled. You know, basically Civil 3D is a uh, style based, not layer based. So I can control the styles and um, dictate how visually I want things to be displayed. Um, if, I, if I go back into it real quick again, I think I can go through this roundabout properties and also use the other one to show you that monochrome one. There you go, it's not much difference, but you can create your own, get, you know, set your own company standards. Now this one, I don't know if you can see it, but it's actually turned everything very dark gray. You can barely see it, but it's actually there. And that's a style they're using um, as an example in there. So I'll zoom in, you can see there um, the style. Um, oh, yeah. Sid asked, let's take a look at that corridor in the object viewer. Is he oh, set? Yeah. Is that danger <laughs> music stuff? I guess he's trying to make me crash to see. It. <laughs> let's okay, see. let's not do it then. Let, let me see if it. I'm sure it, it's a small one, so it should work. Um, so there we go. Now the funny story is, you know, before they created the roundabout tool uh, in 2012. So 2010 was a ribbon. 2012 was the intersection tool that was added Civil 3D. I went through it and actually was able to create a roundabout with the intersection tool. Uh, I was putting intersections at all the corners and made it all dynamic. Now that one intersection, you know, or that one runabout probably had so many targets, it was insane, but I was able to figure it out. And I think I wrote a blog post about that before they, you know, created the vehicle tracking, created the roundabout tool. Um, just one day spending all day just playing around with it. But yeah, so you can see it, it's, it is dynamic. Right now, uh, I don't have a profile. Notice you have alignment, there's no profiles, but if I had a profile, it would start designing this roundabout and building the surface uh, for this corridor. Um, another way you can uh, save time, I think this is per my last community com uh, conversation, we talked about creating a preliminary uh, roundabout in vehicle tracking and bring it into civil 3D and it, brings, it comes in as a corridor. So, so if you remember that video, we actually took that stuff and brought it right into Civil 3D. Um, so questions so far? Like I said, um, all you got to do, if you want to set your own company standards on how the, the style is going to look, let me go back to the other one. Uh, I'll go into the settings pull down here and say uh, drawing settings. And then go to styles. And then here we go. I would just pick one that's kind of what you like and duplicate it. And then start modifying it. So I, you know, I can go in there and rename that. And say I'm going to rename that to now. CLS, so cat learning. Okay, and then edit. And then start going through there and uh, uh, assigning everything in here. So um, through H odd and most of the stuff I was actually turning off. I didn't need all that stuff. Um, now, some things you want to turn on. So let's say when you click on something, you want to delete a splitter island or a cross box. So when you click on it, it's creating like a color and X. You want to keep some of that stuff on. So uh, it's like an editing marker. So um, uh, another question might come up is how do you share this? Once you're done with this, how do you share this setting? Um, you can actually go to the pull down here. Uh, let's do, do, do uh, actually the explorer. I'm sorry. Right here on the ribbon, go to uh, roundabout standard explorer. And then the pull here, this is the pull. Uh, so when I click the one in the standard, it creates a copy here. I can right click and say share standard. And now you can share it to another design team, another office, or you can just put it on the server and then when everyone can access that uh, information. So you can do a save as in there. Uh, if you are curious where everything is being saved, so if I go back into my system settings under pull down and go to directories, you can see here where a lot of these things are being saved. Shared, you can share it to a folder. Um, your settings, this is kind of one of the locations where everything is being saved. If you didn't want to see the other standards, like all the like other language standards, you can come into um, the auto load. And, vehicle, and turn off all those other standards. If you didn't want to see them, you can actually go and uncheck it. That way it doesn't load every time. It's just the US uh, uh, junction standards. So this is where you would actually turn that off. Uh, you can actually change la uh, the language in here also. So uh, questions? 
I know this is kind of a crash course, you know, one hour of just going into vehicle tracking. Uh, but this is a great tool for uh, site designers that are trying to lay out a 2D roundabout per, you know, uh, federal highway design standards and MUTD standards and ASHTO standards um, and get some labels in there. Um, like I said, I can come in here in this one and turn off all those other miscellaneous labels. Uh, oops, sorry. Uh, click in here and go to my properties and switch it back to what I was playing around with. Uh, what's the CCLS? Apply. Close. There's always a two second delay when you're trying to close the dialog box. There we go. And so I've actually turned off a lot of the stuff. And I could turn off the, the alignment names, street names too, also if I really wanted to. Um, let's go back into, uh, now there is a site analysis tool. Um, this is right here. Um, you can do a site analysis, visibility, site on a site. Um, it kind of hatches um, the area. So let's go to next site. And you can see here, it's giving you a line of sight. Go to the next one. It's hatching it. Now this one's not coming a lot because of the weird angle. Let me try fix this back to here. And look what it did to this leg. <laughs> um, approach. Actually, let me go back to the quarter one. And I see if I can do the line of sight in this one. Uh, to Billy, select my, uh, my roundabout. Next line of sight. I don't know if you can see it, but you see the hatching? That's showing you the, your basically your line of sight visibility standards analysis. If I go to the next one, um, next line of sight. And now it's over, where are you? I know it's in the way, it's my corridor. So there it is. Let me freeze my corridor so I can, you can see what's happening here. And you do wanna check that, especially when you're building your, your uh, you're building this roundabout and you've got your surface design, you need to check your visibility because what if this roundabout has a slope to it, a tilt to it? You wanna make sure that line of sight, and especially if you've got landscaping and structures in the middle of this roundabout, that's gonna be important, this line of sight. Um, so, oh, me. Go back to previous next line of sight. And then the next one, there it is. You see attaching, showing you um, your line of sight. So you can also run a little simple reports too. There's report tools in here. If I go back to, um, in here, go into, I think it's this one right here, roundabout report. And there you go. It just kind of gives you some simple uh, max elevation, uh, max speeds of your uh, uh, arms or legs, approach legs coming into your roundabout. Uh, you can customize it, just turn off some columns and stuff in here. Uh, questions, questions, kind of. Looks like you're, you've gotten them through throughout. This yeah, it just crazy. takes a little practice. Um, I, I think the first step is actually coming through and set it up in your standard. So all this stuff is not in your way. Like there's a lot of line work that you really don't need uh, that's related to the design. So you want to go into that um, uh, settings. Sorry, pull down set, drawing settings and go to your style and start creating your company standard uh, style for your roundabout. What do you wanna see? I wanna see signage, I wanna see pavement marking, the, the, uh, the apron around my uh, inner circle and maybe some uh, my uh, splitter striping here for my island, splitter island. And then that's it, you don't want anything else. Um, so, and also, um, you know, if you're building a corridor, what do you want to see in your corridor? You want to see all your alignments. You know, what do you want to see when it builds a corridor? Awesome. All right, let's go back to the, uh, the last two slides. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Uh, don't leave us yet. It's really easy. Yep. We, you leave, you're going to get a quick little survey. It helps us to understand what you liked, uh, maybe you could suggest some topics for the future, all that good stuff, but it's less than a minute. Honestly, just quickly survey, it'll, it'll let us know what you're thinking. Um, next, please. I, pick, uh, I mentioned that if you have the expertise to lead a community conversation, this is the spot where you could do it. You could submit your own session proposal. 
And so I hope you would do that if you'd want to share and give back like Tony did. Tony, this was awesome. Next, please. I've shared some links in the chat with uh, some of the resources. That's our Voices blog, which is 33 people in the community sharing back. You can be a Voices author as well. That's for anybody in our community. And we've got everything from Civil 3D to Inventor to Revit to Dynamo, a little bit of everything in there. Uh, uh, construction cloud, um, so all kinds of resource, resources here to keep you connected to the community, the forums, um, student group, pub, all that, Facebook, Twitter, you name it. Tony's on Twitter, I'm on Twitter. This recording will be posted to that event page uh, where you registered, so you can get to the, the information there. And also it'll be in YouTube. So thank you, thank you, Tony. This was awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad uh, everybody enjoyed it. I mean. Yeah, like I said, it's a lot to take in, you know, uh, don't be afraid to go in there and play around with it create all you need is two alignments to start playing around and building your roundabout um, with your vehicle tracking. And the more you use it, the better you'll get an understanding of how easy it is to use it after a while. So Excellent, excellent. This was good. It, it, it was the other side of the roundabouts that I don't get to see. <laughs> I just drive into them. And, you know, you had that chart that said, you're, uh, you know, going at 17 miles an hour into the roundabout. That doesn't happen here. Um, oh. <laughs> locals, we do 45 into the roundabouts. It's the tourists that don't know, and they pull up and they turn on a blinker to enter the roundabout. You're like, no. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so, all right. Thank you, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. See you, Tony. Later. Thanks.